If you're in the USA, there's a good chance this is your first experience with a tool like this, as it is mine. This is called a power harrow. Let's get started. One of the problems that, that I've had in this garden that we have in the soil types in this area, it's by the way, very rich soil. Um, nothing comes without problems though, right? Um, but the problems that we have in early spring especially, are, the soil is, is real mucky. It stays wet. And if you try to work it too deeply, it'll bring up some, some really muddy dirt and, and that lasts even late into the spring. I've tried to observe how the farmers handle this. And what they do is they'll work the ground deep in the fall, give it time to mellow all winter, I guess, and, and, and they don't worry about it if it's, if it's got some big clods or whatever before the winter. And then in the spring, they come in with what they call a field cultivator. It's got you know, sweeps or shovels on it, and they only work it maybe a couple of inches deep. I'm finding that with a tiller, it's pretty difficult for me to keep from working deeper than that. Uh, I just, I have a hard time keeping the tiller to that depth. Uh, perhaps it's because of the wheelbase of the tractor that allows the tiller to kind of be off the ground or, or in the ground further than that, but, but I have trouble with that. So when Moschio described the power harrow to me, I thought this might be exactly what we need to see. So let's start with the seed bed here. Uh, the roller on the back has kind of packed it down. We get a good view of the seed bed. What we notice is that the weeds aren't chopped up like they are with the tiller, but all the dirt is taken off of the roots and the weeds are just left on top. Certainly if it was a warm day, it wouldn't be long at all and these, these weeds would be dead and gone. It remains to be seen whether some of them will, not this one that was sticking straight up with the roots straight up, but some of them with uh, might actually come back to life. I don't, I don't know if they will or not because the roller kind of presses them back in. Now, all of them have been uprooted, okay? But uh, it's, it's just interesting to see what's gonna happen with them because we don't really chop them at all. Let's see how the mechanism works. So there are two tines on each of these four vertical spindles, and those two tines flip around, and they, they go about, well, in this case, they're going about two inches deep, and they, they stir the soil, and then behind it, this roller comes and kind of gently packs it back down. So that's the approach. I, I guess I'm thinking of it as sort of like a vertical tiller instead of a, the horizontal shaft that you see on a, on a, on a regular tiller this power harrow has four vertical shafts that allow it to kind of whip the soil around. The depth control on this unit is fabulous. It, it does a precise job of controlling the depth, really no matter what I do with the three-point hitch. The roller on the back keeps it from going any deeper than what we'd uh, want it to go. There are a lot of adjustments on that roller. So you can make it go deeper, but wow. I don't really know the appropriate speed to go with this. Maybe I'll try this through a little bit faster. I'll just go a little faster starting right now. We'll see if it looks any different. I didn't really notice any difference at that speed. It looks about the same. So I'll go even faster this way. That's just as fast as little KT wants to pull it. Yep, that's the tractor's name, KT. It's dusty. I'll tell you that. 
but it would be dusty with the tiller here uh, as well. The, again, our soil gets dry right on the top, but there's this layer of moisture, which is the reason the soil is so good. It retains moisture so well. Um, so some other thoughts on this attachment. It is really heavy. Okay, this is the four foot version and Johnny 2, the 2038R, won't pick it up. It'll pick it up about that far off the ground. It will not pick it all the way up. The LX3310, as when we did the specs comparison, we saw that it had a higher lift capacity for the three-point hitch, and it's proving to be the case. We'll get real numbers for that in our comparison later on, but we are seeing a little bit more lift capacity. But the attachment's only four feet wide, so it almost seems like it's too heavy for its width. Um, it's not only is it heavy, it's way back. The, the roller is the heavy part of the attachment, and it's way back there. So that's going to make it even harder for the three-point hitch to attach. Um, you notice there that when I went faster, it, it pulled the engine down. So going faster actually does affect uh, how hard it pulls, which makes sense. Um, but the seed bed, I, I, this is a one-pass tool, uh, at least on what we've done last fall here. No question to me that we can plant this after this one pass. The, the, the oddest thing is how it leaves the weeds on top. It gets all the dirt off the roots, or at least that's on the ones that I've checked, but it does kind of leave them on top. Uh, we're going to get rain here tonight, tomorrow, maybe the next day. Somewhere in here we're likely to get rain. It'll be interesting to see if any of these weeds get, you know, reseeded and are, are able to... Uh, uh, take off and grow, that would not be a good thing. I don't believe it's chopping up the soil quite as much as what a tiller does, and, and that might be a good thing. Some people complain about a tiller uh, just, just doing too much chopping and leaving it too powdery. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a really good seed bed, but it's not that powdery. Now, when I break this apart, I mean, it's, it should be dry enough to plant. All the farmers are planting, but I still am able to make little mud balls out of some of this. It, it just shows the challenge, and that it is to, to get stuff planted at the right time here. Those little mud balls will turn into rocks, essentially, <laughs> and, and be here all summer. It's, it's bizarre how this soil works. These are the two strips that I tilled when it was too wet before. They don't have any weeds in them, but it'll be interesting see if it looks any different behind the power harrow after it's been tilled. One thing I have found is that like when I run out to the end where there is sod, this thing does not like that hard sod at all. It's meant to be operated in a looser soil that's already been worked before. Other than these two passes right here at the edge, on this edge, the rest of the garden had not been worked since last fall. And you saw that in the uh, forward versus reverse rotation comparison on the tillers. That's the only work that it's had. We didn't touch it after that episode. the hole just like a tiller. Leave the furrow at the end just like a tiller. This power harrow is from Moschio. I'm not sure that you're going to be able to get it at agfolks.com because, well, it requires a little bit bigger track. I wanted you to see it and just see what kind of uh, results that you got from it. I, I thought it was quite fascinating. So, folks at Moschio let me borrow it here for, for this spring. Two varieties this year from ForTheGrower.com. Link below to that, by the way. Um, SV9010SA, that's our perennial winner so far here. That's been our favorite of everything we've tried. We usually have one other competitive 
trial, and this year it's Milky Way Triple Sweet. So today I'm going to plant the SV9010 SA because I know it's good, and then in our next planting I'll plant some Milky Way. Christy, I'm, I'm afraid some of those weeds are going to live. I think they might too. I really like the seed bed yes. that the power harrow left. It was real smooth and just gently packed, you know, not, not, not too firm, but right. it doesn't have the fluff sometimes that the tiller has, which is good, but, you know, sometimes a little harder to, to plant in, I think. Right. So I think that's going to be good. We've got eight rows. What is like? 80 some days. I know, I'm ready for it now. Okay, let's actually. just sit out here and wait. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> I'm hungry. Me too. Cheeseburger! Yum. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with, with Tim. Tim. Feeling a little rain, Christy. I suspect we're gonna get this done, hopefully, just in time. I hope so. You wanna plant crossways just like normal and start on the far end. Okay. I think. Okay, because last year I think you started down here.